sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I I keep loving Him over and over and over again. It's good to be here this afternoon. I thank Brother Clay and those who were responsible for uh, being able to get here, I thank God most of all for giving traveling grace and for seeing fit to bless us this morning uh, to be able to arise and to see this day. Uh, it is my prayer that I can say something that will uh, help to encourage and to edify each one of us. Uh, uh, we thank everyone for coming uh, because I believe that knowing what God expects of us is very, very important. I've always believed that I don't mind being fussed at uh, if somebody has told me what they expect of me and I'm not doing it. I get a little agitated when somebody complains that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing and you never did tell me what you expected of me. I thought about that because the text that I have, the and I, I appreciate this, uh, the love that shares the truth and the truth that cares to love. And I, I, I really believe that that talks to us about how we talk to one another, how we live and deal with one another. Uh, uh, so sometimes you, you get a little upset because they jump all over you because you didn't do it right and you didn't really know what doing it right looked like. Uh, 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 I remember a long time ago we we were having a brothers meeting at the church and somebody was saying that those young folk need to come here so they can learn how to do it right and the fellow who said that I won't call his name nor will I recall where it was uh, had a tendency to show up for church with no Bible in his hand uh, uh, and then he let those folk who come in 10 minutes late do all this stuff because he just sat there and observed how everything went. And, and I remember saying something to this effect because I've always had kind of a little bit of stubbornness about myself. We ought to go on and admit it. Every one of us got some. I, I, I said to him when my daddy taught me how to plow that old mule he didn't just throw that mule and plow at me. He yeah. gave me some practical experience. Yeah. Yeah. So when he decided to go off somewhere and say, he'd say, go down, plow that field, he knew that I knew what I was doing. I believe when God talks about our text and let me read it right quick because it's kind of in the middle of a couple of things he says but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head Christ and let me look at 16 verses 16 as well from whom the whole body Join and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edification of itself in love. That means that as members of the church to me we have a job to help one another. That's right. That's right. And if you're like me, you don't want somebody jumping down your throat without having shown you that yeah. they care. That's right. That's right. Now, I said that because too many times we, well, there's somebody who's sitting on that side of the building who's been eyeballing somebody who's sitting on 
that side of the building for the last 40 years. And when we find somebody over there who ain't acting right, the first thing we want to do is run over there and tell him how wrong he is. We don't know his name because we haven't spoken to him in the last And then we wonder why he get mad and run off. Uh, help us now. Help us. You see, if you, if you love me, we ought to be able to have the kind of fellowship that, where, that we know one another. Uh, we was talking sometime about elders, and I, I believe we missed the point on elders. He said, elders are the shepherd to flock. That means they know what the Christian life and the difficulties of the Christian life is about, and they can help those other folk who are having trouble because they can help you with the, the thing that they are already having trouble with. See, I've already told you because I don't have any new stories that my mom and dad lived for, um, was married for 74 years and if I wanted to talk to somebody who knew some information on how to stay with somebody for any length of time I, I'm not talking to somebody out there who don't know something but what a book talks about. I'm talking to a couple of old people over there I mean, I'm sorry a couple of wise people over there who been through some stuff because they helped me get to where I am. So they know me and they can help me. And what I'm saying is when he says speaking the truth in love. So let's look at it. First of all, you got to have the right attitude. So I had to borrow it. And please forgive me if I use somebody else's stuff. Please forgive me, but I can't do this without delving into somebody else's. In, in, in the first place, I look at chapter 4, verse 1. He said, I beseech you, I beg you to walk worthy of the confession is what he's talking about. Or the profession of what you call yourself to be. What do you call yourself to be? You see, if I'm going to be a leader, I ought to show up at church uh, in front of everybody. I ought to have my, 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 my fishing pole in my hand, and I ought to be ready to know and to help somebody who are having trouble. If I call myself, walk worthy of it. That means that after somebody have observed how I'm living, they can identify and say he is what he claimed to be. Now I can talk to you. But because I've gone through the same thing that you're going through, I don't just talk to you anyway. Because I know how I'd like to be talked to. I remember uh, going to a funeral a few years ago, and and I said to myself as the people were talking, I say that phrase we use, that catchphrase, if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. Now let me fill in the blank. My mother passed away July the fifth, eleven years ago. Are you getting my point? Yes, on August, on September the 27th, my father will have been gone six years. If there's anything, let me know. Do I remember how it felt when mom passed? Do I remember how it felt when dad passed? If there's anything I can do. Do I have to say the rest? It shouldn't have to be that way because I know how you feel. What do I need to do then? Do 
do something about it based on what I already have been through. And I can do it with love even though you're having difficulty because I know how I wish those folk would have done for me. You see, I had a good friend and then uh, and he said, I got two days of personal time to take off when dad passed away. And he said, I'll take those two times. When you're going back over there, you see, hey, here's the story. I, I was in Mississippi. Dad had a stroke. I'm on my way home. I get to Little Rock. The phone ring. And they said, he just went. I had to come back over here. And my friend said, my friend. I got two days personal time. When's the field? You know, and forgive me. You know, I did not touch a key that weekend. My friend pulled his credit card out and put gas in my vehicle. My friend drove all the way from here. That's 500 and some miles to Mississippi. My friend was right there with me. If there's, I can do for you. But that's what is included in that text. Because you're speaking to. And before we get to that deal where it's speaking to is just talking about words, it's not talking about words because what he did spoke louder than anything that could have been said. So he said, I beseech you. Had the right kind of attitude because you are who you say you are and people can see. Do, do you really care? If you care, then folk will know you care. So when you say something, if you have to say something, what is said will be understood. Even if it's hard to take. Even if you don't want to hear what they're saying. Because they've shown that they care about you enough to know that they're trying to help you out yeah, yeah, yeah. and not bring you down. So he says, we need to have the right attitude. And the right attitude, he said, we are called with lowliness, humility, with gentleness. How do I feel about you? Because what I say and what I do for you is based on how I feel about you. You see, some, when, when we read in Ephesians, uh, in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit, those two words kind of go together. Kindness is the action that you do. Gentleness is the attitude that you have. And they got to work together. What kind of tip would you give a fella at a five-star restaurant with the best steak in the world if he threw your steak in front of you and told you, eat it? My tip would be, son, go get some training in how to be nice to folks. Yeah. Yes, yes, and I don't know if I'd have said it that night. <laughs> would you? Yeah. That would be my yeah. tip. Yeah. We have to learn how to speak to Preach one up. another in a way that yeah. people can understand that we care about their souls. That's right. That's right. He says, why do you have this? He said, endeavoring, bear, bearing with one another in love. Uh -huh. 
You see, I'm not going to get all over you. I'm going to be have some long suffering. I'm going to have some patience with you. Because you may not get it the first time. But I'm not going to quit. If he, that mom said what? If you do, tell him a thousand times and he hadn't got it yet. Tell him how many? thousand and one. Because he's trying to get you to understand that that's what's important. Long suffering. Bearing with one another in love. Anybody you can't stand. Do you love him? Then learn how to stand it. Yeah, if you don't love him, then brush him on off. I, I remember uh, this happened, actually happened in the church. The man said, I put up with this guy because the two fellows had trouble with each other. Two weeks. Y'all, uh, I'm a little over 60. If the Lord didn't put up with me for two weeks, I, I'm in trouble. Because my two weeks went out a long time. Long suffering. We got to learn how to put up with folks. You got to learn how to be nice and say it in such a way that folk can still know that you love them. In spite of the fact that you stepped on his last nerve twice. Not just once. Twice. He says to keep the unity. We're working hard to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, chapter 13, uh, and I believe 12, 13, and 14 go together. Chapters of 1 Corinthians. Because 12 talks about a problem, 13 talks about the real motive, and 14 talks about the solution. And in 13, where he talks about the motive, every word in there is an action verb. It denotes an action. He says, love suffers long. That's an action. Love has some put up with. We have to have put up with. Even if the fella don't say it right, we still have to love it. And if we are saying it, make sure that we do our best to say it right. Love is patient. It is not boastful. That's the wrong thing to do. Don't boast about what you got because that other fella, it may be in pain and he needs comfort and not to be put down over what? You're not trying to make you look better than he is. You're trying to be where all of us can get to heaven. Yeah, that's it. And isn't that Thessalonians who, which says that the, the dead won't go up there until all the righteous are gathered and we all going together? Yeah. Isn't that what it says? Uh, so so if I check out tomorrow, don't worry about it. Y'all and us will all be together when we go. So here's what he says. He says there's one body. You know I like that because you see, that puts me at one position. This lectureship will be preached by a whole lot of brothers, but and each one have, will have their contribution to its whether how great it is, what is learned here. I, I can only just say just a little bit about what happens. If I do my part, then everything works out. Why do we do our part? For the edification of all one body. I got blood pressure. Uh, that old heart don't act the way it used to. It makes us up, messes with everything because you don't have the energy that you used to have. 
you, 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 you have a couple of eyes, but you have to have some help to get them to, because you they just don't do like you used to. What I'm saying is the church is one body and all of us have a part in whether that body is effective or not. Verse 25, you say I got to pick on somebody else's lesson again too. Chapter 4, verse 25, he said, put away lying. Tell everybody the truth. It may hurt. It may hurt. But it's better than anything else. Tell the truth. Let not, let each one speak truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another if you don't have the truth it affects me because we are neighbors I don't have the truth either we gotta both have the truth we are members he said be angry but don't sin we are not going to agree on everything. Look in the parking lot. There's all kinds of makes and models of things out there that's got wheels on it. They got a road. We rolled up with all kinds of brands of tires on those things that's out there. But we're in here together. Does it matter that you came in something that I didn't come in? But what does it matter? That we can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. And so, don't lie. Don't 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 get upset over little things. At the old house we had, uh, it was a couple of holes in the wall, and it's not because I was lazy. It was because I wanted to keep those wall holes there to remind me of something that boys need to understand. A good family is worth more than arguing over a hole that somebody put in in the fight. You know what we argue over? The hole in the wall. And we don't pay much attention to the fellowship among the people. So I told my boys, you know, you, you that's the only brother you got. You got to love him. That's right. That's right. I don't care how he act. I don't care how weird he is. You got to love him. <laughs> Maybe I'm the weird one. I just thought he was. <laughs> you see, I had to learn that as well. Yeah. I told you already, I got it. It was 11 of us. I, I've got 10 siblings. And they had ten siblings too. And each one had a different ten. Because each one had a sibling that they they couldn't count themselves. So they had at least one different than everybody else. And they had to learn how to live with each other. That's what God's telling us. That's what Paul is telling us. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath because you ain't got nothing. I'm sorry, English people, I know it. The word is you don't have anything. You ain't got nothing that's so important that you can't need to strive to get along according to God's will. You ain't got nothing. He says, our job is to work, to be able to do what we need to do so that our communication will be for what? To edify the body of Christ. If I'm wrong, you please tell me. If I need some help, please help me out. Because I need it in order for me to be what I need to be. And I would hope that everyone would have that same attitude so that at the end of the day, 
Notice what verse 16 says. He says, knit together. I, I never could knit, but I know some people who knit. In most knitting, all you have to do is pull that one string. Because in most knitting, all it is is, if it's one color, it's what? One string. One string. But you can make some beautiful stuff when you wind that thing up, around, through, across, in between, up, under, over. You can make some beautiful stuff. But if one person pull that wrong one string, he's saying we have trouble. Make sure you are not the puller of the string. Make sure you are the needle that's hooking all that one string all up in between, under, over, around, and through all those other strings so you can have something beautiful. Why, he said, you knit together. You can't make it no simpler than that. I like that word. He said we are knit together. You see, if we are divided, and I'm going to close because I don't have but a minute or two. He said we are, we are divided. We are just like children tossed to and fro. You hear something, you take it. I hear something, I take it. No, that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be that when we hear something, all of us ought to be hearing this because it's the truth. It is spoken in love, and when it's the truth spoken in love, we are knit together, and we'll end up being one piece of cloth. One beautiful piece of cloth. So what he's saying to us, what he's saying to us is, don't be drawn away by all the trickery that men have. They come up with all kinds of different things. Somebody said they saw something. Somebody had a new revelation. Somebody went to the same dictionary that I bought a long time ago and came up with some new definitions. Somebody decided that what I learned a long time ago was old-fashioned, and you can't deal with old-fashioned. To that I said when daddy planted cotton he got certified cotton seed. Now how he got it in the ground whether he did a big farm oil tractor or he did a couple of mules or whatever he did when it came up it came up the same thing. Cotton. He could have sent all his 11 children out there to pick it but they was picking Cotton. He could have put a tractor out there and he picked it better and a whole lot less heat for us, but it was still. And all I'm saying to us is truth is going to be truth. We need to learn how to make sure we speak truth because we love one another. And we need to make sure they know we love them. You see, brother, brother, brother Clay made me the monitor, then he tell me to lead the preacher along. Well, you're talking about being thrown and thrown and thrown and thrown.